Hello, welcome to today's video. So this is take two. I'm just doing another audio check to see if we have audio this time. I'll be with you in just a second. Let me just refresh my page. If all things go well, you're probably going to hear me echo. So let's hope you echo. Yeah, well, I have my headphones plugged in so you don't hear it. But yeah, it works. Cool. So today we're going to be talking about how do you know if it is the right time to reintroduce a food that you've been sensitive to in the past? How do you know if now is the right time? How do you, how do you tell? How do you figure it out? It's a good question. So this is a question that came from the Healing with William support group. I said today, I want to make a video for you guys. What do you want me to talk about? And this one seemed a pretty popular one. So this is the one I wanted to do. It's a really good question. And answering it is, I'll be honest, a bit of a challenge. So where do we go? I'd start, so obviously we always come at health from two levels. We've got physiological and emotional. What, where is the sensitivity? Is it, is it a, is it a physiological problem? And by that, I mean, one, can your body break down, digest and absorb it properly? And two, can it do so without triggering an immune response or some kind of reaction on a physical level? If, if yes to both of those, then you're pretty much ready to do it. But how do you figure it out? Well, we'll cover that in just a second. If it's emotional, and this is, this is, this is where it's, where it gets harder because when I say if it's emotional, you might think you don't, you don't have to feel it as an emotion necessarily. It doesn't have to be experienced as emotional resistance. You may not feel fear. You may not feel anxiety. You may not consciously notice any opposition to eating with food. But if there is emotional resistance that you're not aware of, it can, it can, you can find, you can, you can find out somatically. Your body will respond physically with, with symptoms and that's going to suck. You know, you don't want that. So how do we do it? So starting physiologically, I would ask, okay, what is the food that we're trying to, trying to introduce in its current present, is it in its present format? What is the closest thing in your diet currently to this food? Do you have any foods that are similar in the way that they're digested or processed by your body? If you say, for example, you haven't eaten grains for a long time, say for example, you've just, or maybe not even like, not even starch. So you're not having like rice, potatoes, bread, pasta, anything like that. These are a food, this is a type of food category that you're going to have to work really slowly with. If you if you haven't had it for a long time, because your body uses a certain set of digestive machinery to process these foods, so if you if you're already having like rice and you're already having potatoes, and now you want to see if you tolerate pasta or sourdough bread or something like that, you have some level of machinery already present. You have already got some of this physiological digestive machinery available. To, 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 to digest these foods. So there's a higher likelihood you're gonna be able to tolerate them and that's gonna be a more likely success physiologically. You also wanna look at how you're preparing them. You know, if you're gonna try and introduce a potato, you wanna think about how, what is the easiest way to include this in a way that's gonna be easiest for my body to digest. So having, say like potato crisps or chips from the store that also have other variables like seasonings, flavorings, vegetable oil, the, the, there's a lot more variables here and it might, it might be more, more challenging. I would start with, I mean, mashed potato with nothing else added to it, you know, boiled potatoes, mashed salt. That's probably where I'd be starting. And it's quite a, quite an easy to digest option. And when you're starting physiologically, I would start with a small amount. So we're talking teaspoon to tablespoon, no more than that. And I would also probably, at least initially, utilize the rules of food combining. I, I would say that using food combining, at least initially, could be very helpful because we don't want to, we don't, we want to avoid having overlapping food groups that require different digestive machinery to be, to be active to digest these foods. When we're, when we're just introducing something for the first time, we want to do it in an environment where we're giving ourselves the highest likelihood of success. And the best way we can do this is to allow our body to fully focus on just digesting this singular food. So I would look at, of this food group, what is the easiest and most digestible way to introduce this to the body? And how can I, how can I prepare this food in a way 
that it's most likely to succeed, to be successful in the digestive process. What's the best way I can process this food so that it has the highest likelihood of success? So those are the two, those are the elements that I would really consider. And from there, you, you, you just have to try. At that point, you just have to try and see what happens. And if you have, have applied these rules, so you've, you've looked at the format of the food that you're having and you've had it in the, the easiest to digest form and you've processed it the best way to make it as digestible as possible and you have a reaction, either, so, so the, the, the consequence is what's going to happen here is either you're going to eat it and you're going to, and you're fine and then awesome, great, there's no problem. You've now introduced a food, that's awesome. Or you have a reaction and the reaction is an indicator that it's one of two things. Either one, your body physiologically cannot process, digest, and absorb that food. And at that point, you need to not eat it. It's not helpful for your body. Or it means that there's an emotional root cause that's causing the sensitivity or the intolerance. And if that is the case, if, if, the, if the root cause here, if the cause of the sensitivity is emotional, if it has an emotional root, nothing you do physically is going to change this. You can prepare it however you want. You can do it in the most bioavailable way. It doesn't make any difference. Nothing's going to change because the, the problem isn't there. That's not where the problem is. So working and trying to fix the problem at that level doesn't, doesn't do anything. It's not going to work. So this is where it gets more, more complicated, a bit more difficult is when we're looking at, is it an emotional root cause? Because you may be in a point where this is kind of like a, a somatic ARFID presentation. And I would define somatic ARFID. So what this word means, this is, so it's somatic avoidant restrictive food intake disorder. So if we break all of those words down, somatic means of the body, which means the reaction is felt inside the body. Avoid, so, and then we go to ARFID. Avoidant restrictive food intake disorder. So we've got this avoidant or restrictive approach to, to food. So we avoid certain foods, we restrict certain foods, not because we're afraid of the foods themselves, but we're afraid of the negative thing that might happen if we eat these foods. And as this is a somat as we've added this somatic component on the beginning, we're afraid of the physical somatic body sensations that may occur as a consequence of eating these foods, also known as symptoms. So at this point, we have a we have a, a, so this is called a parts conflict. We have one part of us that wants to eat this food. You know, you're inquisitive. You're like, okay, maybe I want to try a potato. Maybe I really miss popcorn. Maybe I want crisps. Maybe I want, so I'll, I'll use some examples, personal examples from me and also examples from foods that I've done this with, with clients. So uh, a, a popular one is ice cream. This was what it was for me. I've had clients that also have this kind of feeling with ice cream. Uh, another client with wine, another client with popcorn. These are, these are, these are, this can be anything, but it's like there's a part of you that wants the food and there's another part of you that's afraid of the negative consequences of eating the food. And that's what's important to distinguish is it's not actually afraid of the food itself. It's afraid of the things that might happen if we eat the food. So, for example, you might say, well, I'm not scared of eating X, Y, Z. I'm not scared of eating pizza. I'm not scared of having milk. I'm not scared of eating dairy. I'm not scared of this. But I'm afraid that if I do have it, a bad thing's going to happen also known as like, I'll have a symptom or I'll have a reaction or I'll have something like that. In this case, if you want to, to be able to introduce this food without a reaction, we have to resolve the parts conflict. It's the only way that we can do this. And if this part is communicating with you somatically, so you've got no conscious awareness of the fear or of, the, of, of why is you averse to doing this thing, or you don't know what the negative consequences are, it might, it might be that you just need to do a little bit of shadow work, a little bit of journaling or a little bit of dialogue with yourself and try and figure out what are these things that I am afraid of happening? You know, what happens when you have a reaction? Because I guarantee you, you have a, you have a process. You have a behavioral process that you go through when you have a, a reaction. So for me, for example, anytime I had a food reaction or triggered, I would call it a stall because it felt like my motility would stop. It felt like my digestive system would just turn off. And like there was something in there that the, my body just couldn't move. So when I, when I would have a stall, my immediate reaction was, okay, I'm not eating for the next 24 hours. I cannot eat for the end of, till the end of the day. And I cannot eat the whole of the next day as well. And this is actually one of the things that my body became scared of. My body didn't like the way that I responded to the reaction. 
So it's a, it's this process of changing the relationship that we have with the reaction. We have to change what the reaction means and, and how we take care of it. So before, the way that I would take care of the reaction is I'd have the reaction, I'd cancel all of my work, I'd close all of my commitments, I would basically tell everybody around me that I, I just needed time to myself and I would isolate and I would, I would, so personally, I would play video games in a, in a very, I'll say, an, I would say an unhealthy, addictive way. But this was when you really start to understand addiction, you see that it's actually a coping mechanism. It's the best tool that you have to help you manage in the situation that you're currently in. So I would, I would use my coping mechanism. I would isolate, cancel work, restrict my food. You can, I can say I would restrict my food and I would fast. The part of me, that did not want me to do this, didn't feel like I was restricting my food or it didn't feel like I was fasting. It felt like I was starving myself and it didn't like that. And I had to figure out all of these, all of these concerns, all of these objections, all of these aversions to the, to the, the negative consequence that could happen when I ate the food. So I would have the food and it would say, okay, there's a part of me that's afraid that you're not going to eat anything and that I'm going to make the symptom mean that my motility is weak and my stomach can't handle more food. And then I'll actually end up starving myself and then I'll die. So my body, what, what this part of me needed was just reassurance that even if I had this sensation in my body, this, this, this reaction occurring, that I didn't make it mean that I shouldn't eat if I felt hungry. And that was the rewiring process that occurred, the mindset shift that happened. I was then able to see that if I'd had the reaction, it didn't mean that I had to not eat anything for the next 24 hours. But this was a rule that I had sort of impl imposed on myself because it helped me manage the symptom in the past. And I had physiological reasons, like I did have slower motility and there were reasons that I did these things. And it's okay to have this structure. You know, this structure is what we use to survive. It's what keeps us functioning. It's what keeps us alive through our reactions and our, and our disease process. But you can get to a certain point in the healing process where your body has regained physiological function, it can break down, digest and absorb foods again. But now our mind is still imposing the same rule set on the situation and is stopping us from eating foods that we actually can digest, break down and absorb. And the reaction that's occurring is no longer physiologically based. It's fear based. It's emotionally based. And it's happening because of these parts that are in conflict with us doing it, because these parts have learned that bad things happened when we ate these foods in the past. And they want to protect us from these bad things happening in the future. But if we can change our relationship with these parts, if we can talk with these parts and say, okay, look, if this bad thing happens, if we have this food reaction, we have this sensitivity, we have this symptom manifest, instead of doing this behavioral pattern that I have, so for me, instead of canceling all my work, isolating myself, telling everybody to leave me alone, playing video games in an addictive way and starving myself, it wanted me to do a different thing. So I tried to figure out, okay, how can I do it differently? And what this part needed was it like, it said, when you feel hungry again, you have to eat. And I don't want you to isolate yourself. I want you to go and talk with Jana, my, my, my partner, my fiance, and say, oh, my belly hurts. Maybe I need a belly rub. Take care of me. I need support. I need you to not cancel. I need you to not cancel your work. I need you to still show up. You know, you need to do this because we need to make money. You know, we need to be a lot. We need to be able to take care of ourselves. We need to be able to survive. And in, in the moment, the, this part said, okay, look, you have work, you have work tomorrow. If we have a reaction, we can't do the work. We won't be able to show up. So I, I, so I, I said, okay, what if I reschedule this call? So if we have a reaction tomorrow, it's okay. We can get through it. And it was like, okay, that's fine. Then. There's no problem here. And I basically went through all of these concerns that these parts had. And then we got to a point where I was still scared. And this is, this is the takeaway from today. Once you've got all of these parts in the right place, so all of these parts are like, they can still be scared, but they're not opposed to having this food. This is where we explore. So we need to inquire and see what are we having? What is the food that we're having? What would be, what would be safe? What feels like the, the safe limit for, for now? What is going to, safety is a, the core principle with, with, with resolving this emotional cause here. It's all about this, this combination of unsafety and safety, this combination of, of fear and in, in, in many ways, like abandoning ourselves or restricting ourselves or imposing this survival structure that we needed 
but that we actually no longer need because physiologically the body has recovered. And this can mean like it detoxed mold or it's no longer being exposed to mercury or it's out of an abusive relationship or like things change, you know? And sometimes we kind of get that, that pattern stuck in our nervous system of this food is unsafe and it stays unsafe, not because it, we can't digest it, but because it has been unsafe in the past. And then we believe it and it's true and the body manifests and we still have these parts in conflict. So they're still reacting. So instead we talk with these parts, we get them, we get them all together. They say, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm no longer opposed to doing this. And what we want to do here is explore with curiosity. So you reach a natural state where there's still fear. There's still a version. There's still a, a, a concern that a reaction might happen. But if it does happen, we have a safety blanket. We know how we're going to take care of ourselves in a way that these parts work, or that these, these parts like. And we explore with curiosity. And curiosity, the, the thing about curiosity, you can really, a lot of this work, like you can look at kids and try and understand how kids work. A child will only be curious when they feel safe. If you look at a child, when it feels unsafe, it is very still. It's very, it, it doesn't move very much. It looks like it doesn't want to move its body. It's very kind of rigid and, and, and unsafe. But a kid that feels safe is naturally curious. It's trying to figure out what is going on. It's picking things up. It's running around. It's doing, it. you know what kids are like when they feel safe. They're chaos. They're just trying to do everything all at once. And what we want to do is try and incorporate your body to a, a state where you feel enough safety that there's a natural curiosity that arises around the food. And you can get to a point where you think it's likely that you, that you will have a reaction, but there's a curious part of you that's like, but I might not. But what if I don't have a reaction? What if I eat the food? because I feel a part of me is asking me to eat this food and I actually feel better. And this is a natural shift. This isn't something you can force. It's, it has a progression over time. It's something you have to work on. But you'll reach a point where naturally, curiosity has overcome the fear. There's enough safety that the fear has come down and the curiosity begins to rise. And when you reach that point where curiosity has just surpassed fear, that is when it's the right time to try new food. And at this point, we look for evidence. So if you've really done this work correctly and all of your parts were on board with the decision, either you will not have a reaction and you've built evidence now and you're in a new world. You're like, okay, what are the rules? Before I used to do these things and have reactions. Now I had it and I don't. I don't understand the rules anymore because it, your whole world just deconstructs in a, in a second. And that's what happened to me. And it was crazy. I was like, what are the rules now? I had ice cream. Can I have coffee? Can I have pasta? Can I have gluten? It's like, what are the rules? I don't know. And if, you can see how that feels kind of unsafe. So it's like navigating this, this, this unsafety by bringing safety to it. And then natural curiosity arises. And then you will hit limits. You know, once I, like the healing of physical and emotional, they go in layers like this. When I had my healing breakthrough, I could eat gluten and dairy and I could eat loads of different foods. But some foods physiologically are harder to digest. And I remember having half a bag of pistachios on like the fourth or fifth day after I had my breakthrough. And it gave me a horrible belly ache. And then that brings up all the doubts. You know, I was like, oh, the bad thing happened that I was scared would happen. And then the instinct is like, oh, I need to restrict my diet. I can't do this. I can't do that. And it's all because of unsafety. So I tried to bring safety back to it and, and tr try to analyze what was happening. It's like, okay, I did have a reaction. Is it true that I'm going to react to everything? It's like, well, no. Like, what, why, why did, what could I possibly have reacted to that would make some logical sense? It's like, well, nuts are kind of harder to eat, to digest. You know, they have anti nutrients, um, they're fibrous. You know, I've only just started eating new food. I haven't eaten fiber for five years. Maybe my gut just needs a little bit of time. And it was like, yeah, that sounds okay. And the part of me that was really afraid was like, okay, it sounds okay. Maybe we'll try something else that we feel like we want to eat. And then I had another, I had like a piece of like, I don't know, fried, I think it was like fried trout or something like that, fried sea bass with rice. And those were both foods that I would have had reactions to. And I had them and I had no reaction. And it was like, okay, I'm, I'm okay again. And then I navigated it. And it was this slow process of learning the new rules of 
instead of my, my diet being limited because of the, the somatic arthritic reactions, the somatic avoidant, avoidant, oh God, I just forgot it. Avoidant, I'm really hungry. <laughs> the uh, somatic avoidant restrictive food intake disorder manifestation, it was now, okay, now I'm actually having physiological reactions. These are physical reactions, not emotional reactions. And then I kind of had to map that out with curiosity, figuring out what the new rules are. And it basically, the rules basically set themselves as you can eat some nuts and seeds. You need to soak and sprout them. Otherwise you have a belly ache. So it was like, okay, these are the rules now. But then at this point, gluten, dairy, fine, no problems. All fruits, basically, basically everything, everything apart from nuts, seeds and beans and legumes. And I know physiologically they are harder to digest. It's a, it's a process on all of the levels, you know, and it goes back and forth. And now I still can't eat as much nuts as I would like, but I can eat nuts without a problem within my limit of my, my threshold as I continue to work on building my physiological digestive capacity. Cause yeah, I'm, I've made a lot of progress. It's been, it's been a year and a half since I've been able to eat unrestricted, but it does take time to build your microbiome back up. And it does take time for your gut to be able to adjust, adjust to being able to handle fiber and nuts and seeds and things that have anti-nutrients. It takes time to build that back up. So to summarize, how do you know when it's the right time to introduce a new food? Physiologically, you want to look at introducing the food on the most bioavailable form with the most easy to digest format. So if you're looking at introducing like some starch, for example, probably don't start with a, a piece of toast from the supermarket, one of those like really refined pieces of bread. Maybe don't do that because maybe you've got a, a, like additives and things. And like maybe don't start with like a packet of crisps because you've got vegetable oil, you've got the seasonings, like these are all variables. We want to try and keep variables low and go for the easy, easy to digest format. So if you're going to try like a potato or you're going to try to add starch, maybe start with a potato and boil it and mash it. Or if you know that you have a nightshade thing, maybe try rice, cook it really down, blend it up into like a rice puree, like you would give to a baby and make sure that it's really digestible in a really digestible format. So physiologically, that's going to give your body everything that, that it needs to to start adapting to do it and also probably consider following the food combining rules, at least initially, just so you're giving your body the maximum chance for success as far as digestion goes. If it's, if it, if it turns out it's actually an emotional root cause, not a physiological root cause to the sensitivity, we have to try and analyze this past conflict that we have, where we have one part that wants to eat ice cream, pizza, donuts, whatever it is, it can be anything, crackers, potato, whatever it is. But there's another part that doesn't want you to do that because it's afraid that an, a, re a reaction is going to happen. And it's really important to distinguish, first of all, that that part is not afraid of the food. It's afraid of the negative consequences of eating the food. That's a big leap. That's a big jump. And then we have to try and understand, okay, I'm not afraid of the food. I'm afraid of the reaction. And then it's like, okay, what reaction happens? And then you're also, this part is also probably afraid of what you do when the reaction happens. So we have to figure out, okay, I have a reaction to this food and this is what I do when I have a reaction. And maybe it's you isolate. Maybe it's you go into this depressive storm and just hide yourself away from the world. Maybe it's you cancel all of your commitments and don't go out and socialize and you just cancel everything and you just want to be a little hermit. Maybe it's, it's anything, you know, whatever the consequence is, the other part of you doesn't like you doing that. So we need to have a communication with these parts, bring them to a new consensus on what to do when you do have a reaction create this safety net and eventually you'll reach a point where you feel safe enough that curiosity begins to arise and you actually want to try the other food because you believe even though a reaction may happen, it's possible that it doesn't and it's possible that you feel better and you'll reach a point where you have that natural curiosity and you want to try. And at that point, that's how you know emotionally you're ready to try new food. So, that is my guide for introducing foods that you've had eliminated from your diet for an extended period of time. This works to cover the physiological base and also to cover the emotional base. So wherever the wound is, wherever the, 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 the trauma is, wherever the sickness, the disease is manifesting, you can cover it. You can cover both of them with, with this approach. If anyone has any questions, please let me know. I'd love to answer them. Hope you found this video really helpful. I'll see you soon. Special, special uh, thank you to everybody in the Healing with William community. 
it's you guys that allow me to make videos like this. So I really, really appreciate it. If anybody's interested in joining us, come and join us. It's effing awesome. <laughs> See you soon. Bye-bye.